Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're gonna be talking about how to debug a failing Docker build. And we're actually gonna go through two different ways to debug a failing build. And I'm gonna explain in a little bit more detail about how a Docker build works so that you can kind of get some of the concepts around why we're able to debug in this way. Uh, but anyway, let's jump into it. Now you might notice the colors are a little bit different. Uh, I'm actually in my other virtual machine because I need Docker Docker. Uh, I originally recorded this video and Podbin does not have the same behavior, so it's a little bit trickier to debug um, from Podman's side. So hopefully we'll be able to reproduce this with Docker. But anyway, uh, let's let's start this. So I'm going to make a simple Docker file. It's not going to exactly replicate a real scenario that you're going to see, but it should be simple enough for us to debug this. So let's open up a Docker file. We're just going to do from Ubuntu Focal. doesn't really matter what the base image is. We're gonna run some commands. Let's just do echo success to F. And we're gonna do another command that's going to fail. Now we're gonna simulate what happens with like NPM and pip and some other stuff where the command output might not tell you what's wrong, uh, but it might write a log file or you might need to do some additional debugging to figure out exactly why it failed. Um, and we're gonna simulate that by just writing a log file and then exiting non-zero. Oh some error to a log file and then exiting non-zero. So this is gonna be kind of our Docker file here. I'm actually gonna open this over here uh, to make this the screens work a little bit better. Um, but before we jump into trying to build this and showing how it works, I'm gonna describe a little bit in more details with a little paint diagram about how Docker building works. So in Docker, there are two main primitives that you want to think about. One is an image and one is a container. An image you can think about like an executable file on a Linux system and a container you can think about like a process. You run an image to get a container. You run an executable to get a process. Um, and you can take the state of a running container and commit that back to an image to kind of make a full cycle. And that's really how Docker build works. So if we take our example that we had there um, and say this is Ubuntu Focal, this is an image. And to do that one run instruction that we had there, let's uh, draw a little arrow here. This is our run echo success to F. And so what this is going to do is it's going to run this image. So it's going to create a container. And this is some, um, it has some name, um, I don't know, foo bar. Uh, Docker by default generates a name and an ID, so it'll have like dead beef as well. Uh, for every running container, we didn't give it an explicit name and the Docker build machinery doesn't give it an explicit name either, so it gets a generated one. Now, inside of this container, we're going to run whatever this run command is. In this case, it's sh-c echo success to f. And what this is going to do on disk is it's going to write the file f. Um, and that's going to be in the ephemeral state of this container. Uh, now, because it's part of the build process, it's then going to commit this container back to an image. Um, so you can think about this part of the arrow as a Docker commit, and this part of the arrow as a Docker run. And you can actually do this yourself manually if you really wanted to. I don't, <laughs> I don't know why you would, um, but this is kind of how the build machinery works. And then after the Docker commit, you get another image down here. This is you know, image. And since this is only one step in the Docker build process, it's not actually going to get a name. It's going to have some other, uh, some other you know, hexadecimal ID and no no name. If it were the last step in the in the build process, it would get tagged with whatever you whatever tag you use on the docker build command line. But this is kind of how the docker build how docker build works and, you know, continually revs this cycle to build more and more layers of your image as you have more and more run commands. Okay. Anyway, back to this. We're going to now build this image and it should fail as we expect docker build dash t test dot um and you can see here that we got a bunch of output and it eventually failed down here. So now I'm gonna show you two different ways to debug exactly what happened. The first way to debug this is what's called post-mortem debugging. So after death debugging, we're gonna try and take a look at this particular failed container as Docker keeps it around when it fails. And we're gonna inspect the file system state. 
And so to do that, we're going to do Docker PS. This is actually going to not have any containers in the initial run here, uh, and that's because Docker PS does not show stopped or uh, or just created containers. It only shows running containers. Uh, but if we do Docker PS dash A, you can see that we have this container sitting around. It says exited one 38 seconds ago, and this is you know, the name that it got generated with, and this is the container ID. Um, and so what we can actually do is we can rerun this container and um, and figure out exactly what happened in there. But first what we're gonna do is we're gonna commit this container to its own image ID. So we're gonna do docker commit that container ID to some image. And now we can run some image and we can poke around and see what happened in there. So if we do docker run, rmti some image bash uh, we are now in this container and we can look around at this log file that we had and that we might not have been able to see what was there before we do cat log you can see that we were able to retrieve the error message from this log file and we're able to look at this image after death um, and so you might be able to you know poke around do whatever you need to do here to figure out why it failed now there is a quirky bug with docker right now in that if you do tag if you do commit this image even though it failed future docker builds will consider this a cache so you want to be very careful to clean this up afterwards and so what we're going to do is we're actually just going to docker rmi this some image that way it doesn't accidentally get picked up by the caching machinery later um, and this is an open bug on docker that i opened because I ran into exactly this problem while while trying to show somebody this this procedure. Okay, so that's the first way to uh, debug a failing build, and this is this is after it has failed. We can look at the state. Now you might want to actually just run this command and figure out exactly why it failed in the same way that Docker would run it. And in order to do that, we're actually going to go back to our original output here. And so you can see here, um, you know, when we do our from. It runs in a container, and then it removes that intermediate container, and it makes this new uh, hexadecimal thing here. This is actually the anonymous image that I was talking about before over here. So that's this cafe cafe image, for instance. And we can take this image, and we can run it, and run exactly the same command that you would see here. And so to do that, we're going to do docker run rmti. Um, and I'm just going to use bash in this place, in this case. Um, you would actually you know, run exactly the same as what it says here, but we might want to poke around as well. But now that we're inside of this image, this anonymous image that was from this second layer here, we can now copy and paste this run command and run it directly and figure out exactly why it failed. And so you can see here, well, <laughs> actually, to, to simulate how it would run there, you would do sh-c, that way it doesn't actually just exit. Um, you can see, of course, it does exit non-zero, and we can look at the log and figure out why it failed. And so this is kind of a reproduction of the error rather than looking at it after it failed. Um, and you might find either of those two approaches useful in figuring out why things went wrong. Um, but anyway, hopefully this is useful. Uh, if you have additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one. So I went back and I tried to figure out why this wasn't working in Podman, uh, where we were doing essentially the same thing, podman build dash t tests dot, and it errors in the same way. And I was doing podman ps, and of course that doesn't show it because it's not a running container. And ps dash a didn't show it, which is where I was confused because I, I thought it was supposed to show up here. But it turns out uh, what, what podman does uh, is it, defers its building process to Builda, and Builda is actually managing its images externally to Podman. And so there's another switch to Podman PS, which is dash dash external, which shows other managed images. And so you can see here is the one from you know, 17 minutes ago where we tried to do our, uh, you know, our, our build here. I, this one doesn't show up here because if um, Podman has a different behavior here for build, you have to do force rm equals false, which you know makes makes complete sense. And you can see now it has showed up here, and now you can do Podman run. Uh, yes. Oh, actually, no, we can't. We have to do Podman commit this. Oh. Hmm. 
I don't know. I'll have to look into this more. But at least I figured out where those those images are going and why I was having trouble with this. But anyway, I thought that was interesting.